What is up, YouTube? Back to another YouTube video, and today we have a guide on how to complete the Master Lost Sector Sky Dock 4. Now, to find this, you want to go to your destination tab, go to the EDZ, and then spawn up here at the Sunken Isles. When you spawn up here, you're going to be right here in this position. So, you got your sparrow or your hoverboard, and then make your way over here to the Cabal ship. Now, if you follow these dirt tracks right here, it's going to lead you straight to the Lost Sector. So, you can see, I'm going to go ahead and follow these. And it's going to lead you towards the inside of the Cabal ship right here. And then you can see all the other sparrows and hoverboards. Just jump off here. You can see the Lost Sector icon is right here. And then right here is the entrance to the Lost Sector. Now you can see the flag here on my screen and the icon on my map. But if you don't see the icon here or the flag right here, that means you have to complete it normally to unlock Legend and Master difficulty. So drop down here. And then make your way towards the left over here. And all you got to do is clear it out normally. And all you gotta do is kill all the enemies inside, kill the boss, loot the chest at the end, and you will unlock legend and master difficulty for this lost sector. And I do recommend that if you have, you know, an exotic or anything that you're trying to farm today, I highly recommend you get it done. But you can see that's our red health bar enemies. That's where you start it. We're gonna go ahead and make our way back up here. We're gonna go over what the exotic is. I don't remember off the top of my head. But we'll just go over it when we go over the modifiers. But if you are looking for a certain one and it's farmable from here i do recommend farming because even on master difficulty like the longest you could take here is like four minutes which is pretty decent so you can be really fast or you can just you know have four minute runs it's up to you so going over the modifiers shielded foes you're gonna face uh, combatants with void shields then master modifiers are extra champions lock loadout and extra shields limited revives barrier and unstoppable champions solar threat 25 percent increase in incoming solar damage Pestilence when defeated spions uh, spawn void grenades at their feet and then attrition regeneration is greatly impaired defeating enemies may create wells of light Then overcharged weapons strand surge 25% bonus to outgoing strand damage solar surge 25% bonus to outgoing solar damage and then overcharged shotgun 25% bonus to shotgun damage You can see here recommended powers 1840, but I'm 1827. I get it done. No problem And then a completed solo legendary weapons are common and if completed solo, exotic arms armor is common. So if you're trying to farm for exotic arms, I highly recommend you farm today's Lost Sector. But enhancement cores are also uncommon. So for that being said, let's go ahead and get into the loadout. And then we'll get into the gameplay. So getting into the loadout, we're running solar subclass with golden gun marksman. And then we got gambler's dodge, triple jump, knife trick, and healing grenades for the abilities. For the aspects, we have on your mark and knock them down. For the fragments, we have Ember of Ashes, Ember of Char, Ember of Solace, Ember of Torches, and Ember of Eruption. Now for the weapons, we're running Riptide. And this one, this is not mandatory to be honest. None of the weapons here are mandatory. Use whatever you want. But I do recommend a Riptide. This can be used for stunning unstoppable champions because Stasis Shatter effects will stun them. But in my opinion, Polar Slants is my go-to here for barrier and unstoppable champions. So uh, I just have this here just to have it. And just know it can stun unstoppable champions, like I said, but, um, you know, trying to proc it every single time can get you killed, you know, because of the way it works. But, uh, again, depending on if you want to use it or not, it's completely up to you, but I do recommend a Riptide. And if you don't have one with auto loading holster and choke clip, I just recommend you farm it or just try to go ahead and focus it in the tower with shacks and then just get it, throw it in your vault and save it. But it's very reliable and one of my favorite guns to use, so that's why I have it here. Then for the secondary weapon, I'm running Polaris Lance, and this is the main weapon of the build here. Um, the exotic trait for it is the perfect fifth, precision hits loaded an explosive round. So when you hit four crits in a row, you proc the perfect fifth, and then that fifth shot is the explosive round. That's going to allow us to ignite uh, enemies, and it's going to stun unstoppable champions. As you can see here, solar ignition effects will stun unstoppable champions. So when we hit four crits on unstoppable champion, and then we shoot it with the fifth, it's always gonna stun. So just know that's uh, one way that we're gonna deal with unstoppable champions. You can either use Riptide if you're gonna do that, or you can use Polaris Lance. And in my opinion, it's just easy with Polaris Lance because remember, the whole point of using the gun is to hit crits, which is very easy to do. So then you're pretty much just getting stuns for free. And then I do wanna know, I do have Dragonfly on this with the Catalyst, so uh, just make note of that. But then to stun barrier champions with it, it's pretty much the same thing. All you have to do is hit crits. And then that's going to be with a artifact mod right here, which is Flint Striker, Rapid Solar Weapon Precision Hits, and Rapid Solar Weapon Final Blows Grant Radiant. So either hitting crits or just getting Solar Weapon Final Blows will give you Radiant. Now another thing to note too, 
You can also proc Radiant with Ember of Torches, and you can see powered melee attacks against combatants make you and nearby allies Radiant. So you don't have to get a melee kill, all you have to do is throw your melee at an enemy and it'll proc Radiant. So uh, in my case, the easiest way to do it is just hit crits and you'll get Radiant. And if you're shooting a barrier champion, just keep hitting crits, hitting crits, and then you'll be able to stun them. If you're shooting an unstoppable champion, hit crits, hit crits, and then when you load that fifth shot, you can stun them. So just kind of think of it like that and you should get it stun no problem. For the heavy, I ran Apex Predator, but you can use whatever you want. Something like Unwavering Duty is very useful. Just try to use a solar weapon, that way you take advantage of the solar burn. But you can just feel free to use whatever you want here in the heavy slot. When it comes to the armor, I'm running Celestial Nighthawk here and I have it so the exotic trait is the Golden Gun Fires one high damage shot. And it still doesn't one shot the boss, but for me it just did enough damage to where I can get him low enough and then finish him off with other weapons. But I just ran Celestial Nighthawk with Solar Targeting, Solar Siphon, and Hands On. And I do want to note these are Harmonic Targeting and Harmonic Siphon mods. So if I inspect it real quick, you can see Harmonic Targeting and Harmonic Siphon. So if you try to put in Solar, you can see there's not enough energy to kind of fill it in because it takes three instead of one. But you can see Harmonic Siphon is worth one energy and Harmonic Targeting is worth two. So we can get these mods in here without having to sacrifice them. So just know that if you're trying to do it, make sure it's harmonic targeting and harmonic siphon along with hands on. For the arms, we have solar loader and heavy handed. For the chest piece, we have two solar damage resistant mods and charged up. For the legs, we have stacks on stacks and two kinetic weapon surge mods. And then for the cloak, we have two bomber mods and a time dilation mod. Now getting into the artifact here, feel free to pause it and just copy it if you want. But the first row doesn't really matter unless you're using any of these mods to stun champions. But for the second row, I'm just going to tell you which ones to equip. I know it's going to get confusing because I have other ones equipped, but Kindling Trigger, I recommend you have that equipped. And if you're using an RPG, Blast Radius can help. And then things like Flint Striker and Wish Into Being, as well as a Raise of Precision and Solo Operative. Those are the ones I recommend you put on to make this build work. But other ones that you can see here that I have equipped from once you came, do not put this one on because it's not helpful. This is increased ability damage to Taken and Scorn combatants, and we're not fighting Taken or Scorn enemies. It's a Cabal Lost Sector, so uh, it's useless here. And the same thing for Heart of the Flame. We're not playing with allies, so when we pop our super, we're not giving allies Radiant, so it's useless. And there's no Overload champions, so uh, we don't have to worry about Overload uh, Rocket Launcher because we don't have to stun them. So... Those are the useless ones, but I'm too lazy to reset my artifact every single time, so I just leave them there. So that's kind of my explanation for that. But now that we went over all of that, let's go ahead and get into the gameplay.